So you're looking to purchase a short-term vacation rental property. Well, shouldn't you just choose the one that's closest to the beach and that should mean you'll be profitable? Well, today I'd like to talk about five questions you should ask yourself before purchasing a short-term vacation rental property or a rental property or any type of investment. Hi, my name is Nicobari Tor, licensed realtor with Vacasa. Welcome to the Real Talk Realtor, where I simplify purchasing, managing, and investing in STRs, which are short-term vacation rental properties. Now some house rules, if you're new here, be sure to click on that subscribe button and also welcome. While you're doing that, make sure you hit that bell notification icon so every time I put out new content, new video, new podcast, you'll be the first to know. And that's important because I wanna make sure that you get first dibs. Now let's talk about a short-term vacation rental property. They're supposed to do one thing. Can you guess what that is? It's not what you think. Run smoothly is what they're supposed to do. Run smoothly. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it should be profitable. Well, yes, but if your operation is running smoothly, that means guests are happy. You're posting pictures of your property. If they're reviewing your property and giving it a really good review, those are all the things that over time, and we wanna talk about longevity, or we wanna look at the longevity because you're not here to make money now. You're here to make money throughout every year. You wanna be able to have an increase in what you're making for that property. Speaking of which, that leads me to the first question you should ask yourself. And that is, what type of management are you looking for? Now, when I say management, I'm looking for you to ask yourself, how do you want the property to be run? Are you going to be doing the bulk of the work? Are you just looking for someone to just post pictures, you know, write a really good um, description of the property, you know, all those internet things. Is that what you're looking for? Are you looking for someone to just market the property? Or are you also looking for someone to do housekeeping, to do maintenance, to do inspections? How far are you willing to go with what you're looking for in the management? Or perhaps you're just looking for someone that's going to do everything. And that means taking care of the guests, from communicating with the guests, communication with the guests, to marketing the property on all of the sites, and also maintenance, housekeeping, and the whole shebang and bang. How much are you willing to do yourself versus you just want someone to do a full service? When it comes to managing, we wanna make sure, or you wanna make sure that you're taking the emotions out of things. Remember, this is an investment property. This is business, so you want to just Focus on making sure that things are running smoothly, your guests are happy, they're posting pictures of themselves in a hot tub on the gram, and they're getting tons of likes, and they're telling their friends about it, and they're leaving you a really good review. Because those are things that over time, you're going to come to appreciate more, and guess what? How your property is managed is not only a reflection on you as an owner, but it's also a reflection on your property, which is what people see. The second question I think you should ask yourself, second one, is are you going to go through this venture alone, with a partner, or as an entity? Now, let's go back to managing because it's going to matter how you manage the property. If you're doing it alone, well, that just means all the responsibility is on you. If you're doing it with a partner, then that's someone else you have to check with, check in with, perhaps if you're looking to remodel, uh, decorate. Also not to you know, mention proceeds as well. You know, how will proceeds be split? On the flip side, it also means that you have some help. So if you're both trying to run this property yourself, then you can have someone that's going to focus on the maintenance, perhaps the housekeeping, and the other person that perhaps will do the marketing and outreach and you know, making sure your property stays booked. If you're doing it with an entity, then that means you have a little bit more leverage. Perhaps there's people working for you, perhaps housekeepers, maintenance, perhaps you already have these systems in place. So it's really important to think about how you foresee how this property will be managed. Also, are you the type of person that works alone or you work well with others? It really will be important to just kind of keep that in front of your mind or in forefront, forefront. You can also just flip this question a little bit and say, well, would it be best that I go on with this venture alone, with a partner, or as an entity? Because those are all going to give you different resources. I think the third question you should ask yourself is, when would you like the property to go live? The property getting signed up and set up and all of that, 
doesn't mean it's going live yet. Before the property go live, you need to have pictures, descriptions, you probably need to do an inspection of the property. What about if you have some repairs that you have to do, if you're looking to remodel things? All of that could be done ahead of time before the property goes live because when the property goes live, that's when your guests are able to see the property. Your property going live means that it's now available for booking. Guests are looking at it, they're comparing it to other properties, and now they can start to plan their vacation or plan their stay at your property. The fourth question I think you should ask yourself is, am I going to use this property? It's your property, you can absolutely use the property whenever you want. Well, you just gotta block out dates for yourself, but those block out dates are gonna cost you money. It should also affect question number two, which was, am I going to go in on this venture alone with a partner or an entity? Because if you had a partner, then you essentially have to split time or schedule and discuss which times either of you would be able to use the property. And what if you're looking to go use the property at peak times? Well, that means you're not going to be able to get that high revenue dollar at that peak time that your property usually books for. Now, the last question is probably the one that you thought we should start with, which is how much return on investment are you going to have with this property? That's where your homework should come in. I don't really look at just, you know, how much are you going to make this month, this year. I just look at the whole picture, you know, how much can you make and then continue to make consistently and continue to grow. That's what I focus on. So those are the five questions that I think that you should keep in mind if you're in the market or shopping for a short-term vacation rental, as well as also just a rental property. Now, in another video, I'd like to dive into each of these a little bit more. I'm very, very sure there are lots and lots of questions that matter to you that I didn't get to touch upon today. That's perfectly fine. That's what more videos are for. But let me know in the comments below what you think good questions are. Well, I appreciate you watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It'll help me out a lot to be able to grow this channel and bring you more content. Well, my name is Nick Tor, The Realtor, and I'll see you in the next one.